Have a great day, everyone. Welcome again to another series of discussion and lectures on the subject building and enhancing new literacies across the curriculum. So this time I will be giving my input on the topic or, or the discussion about the 21st century education. But before that, if this is your first time to visit this channel of mine, you can subscribe the channel, click the subscribe button below. And of course, you can also click the notification bell for you to be updated of our video uploads, especially about professional education and teacher education subjects. So this time we'll be having a short discussion about the 21st century education. For that, uh, let's have first to define what is a 21st century education. No? Uh, 21st century education, this is the celebrated uh, the celebrated season of education, educational system of today, which we are facing. You know? Despite of the pandemic, we are able to uh, deliver, still deliver our content, our competencies to our students and to our learners because of the advancement of technology. Now, when we hear the word new literacies, it is always associated with the 21st century skills. Skills and literacies are, are interrelated. So what does a school look like or an educational institution if it is a 21st century? So it is a great challenge for you, future teachers, future licensed teachers, and of course, for us who are already a teacher in this 21st century, we are also challenged of how are we going to deliver? How are we going to, to teach our learners how to learn? That is a great challenge, no? This is thinking about how our learners will be able to learn from us. How a student learn from us, from us teachers and from their classmates and their co-learners because we always believe that in learnings, there are different skills that they should acquire and possess collaboratively, individually, on whatever platform that they could learn. So in the 21st century education, there are four important C's, no? The four C's of 21st century education. So what is that 21st century skills which starts with letter C? We have here four letter C of the 24th century skills. Of course, the critical thinking, it involves our mind, metacognition. It's not just an ordinary cognition. It's beyond cognition, beyond thinking. That's what we call critical thinking. What we want our learners to develop is to, to become critical when it comes to their thinking, when it comes to different uh, uh, concerns and problems that may occur, they could find problems. So our, we want our learners, we want to develop a type of learner who is a critical thinker, who can find solutions to every problem and not dependent, you know? And very, uh, and he or she could be able to find a solution to every problem that he or, may, he or she that may encounter. So higher order thinking skills is what we want to our learners to develop in the 21st century education. So as a teacher, you as a future teacher also, you facilitate the learning process, which our students are also challenged to think critically. That's the greatest challenge that we want to indulge our learners in a way of thinking that beyond thinking, beyond just an ordinary thinking or cognition, we should have the idea of instilling metacognition. No? When the word is meta, it's beyond thinking, critical thinking, thinking about thinking. So teaching our students how to learn. It's not what they are going to learn. It's not always what they are going to learn, when they're going to learn, but how are they going to learn? So we want our learners uh, to, to develop that kind of learning in which they are independent enough to find solution, to think critically. Another thing, number two is creativity. No? So earlier we have the critical and we have now number two, we have the creative thinking, creativity, thinking outside the box. No? 
So if our learners are going to have this kind of thinking, which going which behind beyond beyond just an ordinary uh, creativity or beyond ordinary work, they should go beyond uh, outside the box so that 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 thinking would also develop. Ibig sabihin kailangan nilang kailangan nilang baguhin ang kanilang pananaw, ang kanilang pag-iisip na hindi lamang isang ordinaryong pamamaraan kundi labas pa or or, or extraordinary way of thinking. That's creativity. No? The third one, we want also to develop our learners the collaboration. No? So as a future teachers, we are going to facilitate the learning process in which the students collaboratively learning from each other, working with others. That is what we want our learners to prepare in the real battle of life. You know, because we are living in a community, in a society, we should interact, we should work collaboratively with others. We should not be aloof. We need to have a socialization because a better, uh, better decisions comes from, a, comes from a collaborative work of different groups or different individual in a certain group, so collaboration. But in that way, we also consider that collaboration may sometimes other students may dependent from the other group. So as a teacher, as a facilitator, you give tasks from each member so that this collaboration not may, not, may not be abused by some individuals, some learners, because they are so dependent with each other. So. Think of a possibilities that every individual in the group or in the in the group na, na they could um, perform individually or they could perform their assigned tasks in the group. So that's collaboration. And the other C is the communication. No? It, it's not just merely uh, how you're going to communicate, but conveying ideas, expressing your ideas, your thoughts, sharing your thoughts through our communication process. We all believe that communication skills is one of the most important skills in the 21st century, which we want also our learners to develop. Aside from this, there are other three, it's not the seven C's, but the four C's are the basic or the fundamental skills that a learner in the 21st century must possess. Again, we repeat, these are the way that we want our learners to learn. You know, the 21st century education must look like in this space, in this, in this uh, framework you know, that our learners should have the 21st century skills, critical thinking, develop the higher order thinking skills, creativity, collaboration, working with each other, and of course, the more other uh, co-equally co important skills uh, among the forces is the communication skills. Not only merely communicating, but also conveying ideas or thoughts in a group or individually, you know, expressing your thoughts through a communication process. So those are the forces in the 21st century education. Okay, I hope that you have uh, get the idea of the forces. No? Uh, we go deeper on the following discussion on each cis in the 21st century. So we just get the, the, over, uh, the overview of the 21st century education in that point. So what is the 21st century education in the context? 21st century schools focus on project-based curriculum. This is not just merely project that we have experienced before in the traditional platform, the traditional way. No, that a student will just get a piece of paper, cut it and submit it, write and submit it. That's already the project. That is the concept of project that we have in our mind when we have the idea of submitting a project to our teacher. The project-based curriculum, it is a proposal of something that a problem exists. So how are we going to give a solution through a project-based uh, project activity or task, like making innovations in order to solve existing problem. In a very young age of our students, we need to inculcate to their mind 
to look into a solution to each problem. That's a project-based curriculum, project-based learning, no? which a student may also have a prototype solution. When I say a prototype, no? if you hear the word prototype, it is just a model. Uh, seem like, it seems like a possible solution to each problem that may occur in the process. So that is a project-based learning or a curriculum that we want to integrate in the class. No? For life that would engage our students in addressing real world problems. It is not merely the project in our mind that have in our experience before that we need to cut papers, go glitters. After cutting, you write something, then submit. That's not the project base that I am talking about. The project base is looking into a possible solution, like a prototype solutions of every problem that a certain individual may encounter in his or her real world, no? well, he, real world problems and humanity concerns and issues. That's a 21st century education looks like. Okay, this has become an innovation in education. That's what I said earlier, no? uh, from a textbook driven in a traditional way, but I am not saying that the traditional way is not that effective. No? Although we need to innovate out of that, no? Uh, the textbook driven, the teacher centered, the paper pencil schooling into a better understanding of concept of knowledge. We go beyond to this. We have experienced this kind of system in of our education before. Why not innovate? Why not make out of the box? No, think critically, creatively, and facilitate the process which our students are engaged personally of their meaningful learning experience. We want our learners to experience that kind of learning, no? not just a textbook driven, uh, teacher centered facilitated uh, discussion, delivery of lessons. No? It's into a better understanding of concept of knowledge, a new definition of an educated person. Teachers transform the rule from being a dispenser of information. So that's what the, the traditional way of, of uh, teaching, no? on, on the scenario of a school, which the teacher is the sole source of information. The sole source of knowledge is the teacher. So that's the concept of a traditional way of education. That is why we believe before that the teacher is the, the main role of the teacher is the dispenser of information. No, we, we want our, learner, our teachers for the 21st century to become a facilitator of learning. We, we just facilitate no, as a teacher, think of the different activities that will entice the interest of our learners and involve and engage the learners in the teaching and learning process. And let our students translate, no? help our students translate information into knowledge and knowledge into wisdom. So from a simple knowledge to an, an idea or a concept or, or, or beyond, beyond just a textbook driven activities, teacher centered and paper and pencil exams and assessments to a real life or an authentic form of assessment like a project-based learning or a project-based assessment. So that's the 21st century, you know? I hope that we could have that kind of classrooms, that kind of learning environment. No? Although we are in a pandemic, we could not have the, the physical classroom, but even in the virtual classroom, we can also implement the 21st century education in that situation. Another thing, learners will become adapted to changes. Of course, we believe, we tend to believe that our learners are adapted to changes, innovations. In the past, learners spent a, ra a required amount of time in the respective courses. You now, when we are think, you no, know, I was just also a student before, uh, when the bell rings, automatically it will come to my mind that the session is already ended because it's time bounded. You know? Our learning must, must have no limitation at all. And I am not saying about time management here. What I am talking about here is our time should not be restricted when it comes to learning. 
receive passing grades and just graduate and finish the course. That's the mindset of, the, of our learners before. Today, learners are viewed into a new context. So what's the new context right now? Before we just aim to have a passing grade, we take the exam or quizzes for us to pass. We let us change that kind of mindset that every learners are thinking that they need only to pass because just a requirement to a concept to a perspective that, that we need to have that a learners must have this kind of context beyond passing the scores, passing, passing the exam, submitting the requirements. We need our learners to think of beyond that idea. No? What are those new contexts that a teacher must also think about to their learners. Teachers must discover, number one, students' interest by helping them see what and how they are learning to prepare them for life in the real world. So the 21st century, always think about the real, real world, not just because we are in the classroom, you just admit what the teachers requires you to submit, but let's go beyond the borders. Let's go beyond the limitation of that concept that we, we need just to submit the requirement because it is required by the teacher. Let us help our learners to see on what and how they are learning. And what's the purpose of having that kind of learning? That is because we are preparing our learners in the real battle of life. You know, the four corners of the classroom is just a laboratory of life. Again, I repeat, <coughs> excuse me. The classrooms are a laboratory of life. The learning environment in the classroom or in an institution is just a laboratory in life. The real battle of life is the outside world, the real world. So that is why we need to discover our students' interest. Number two, a, teacher's, a teacher must instill curiosity. This is what we need to our learners. The, the level of curiosity must be high so that they will be engaging themselves, themselves into a level where they are very thirsty of learning. They are very inquisitive. You know? So we want to develop a type of learner who is a very inquisitive one. The level of curiosity is very high, which is the fundamental to lifelong learning. You now, if a student, why there's a need there, by the way, why there's a need for us? So this is our first question. By the way, there are questions that I will be asking. There are three questions probably you'll be asking that you need to answer in the comment section. So later, you know, after you finish the entire video, you just finish the entire video for you to learn something from this discussion and answer the three questions in the comment box section. So why there is a need? The first question goes like this. Why there is a need for us to instill as a teacher curiosity to our learners? Of course, as being stated, when a someone is being curious, they are hungry of, of or they are thirsty of seeking, of knowledge, learning. So if someone is asking, you need to answer it accordingly. Okay, number three, they must be flexible in how they teach. So a teacher must be also flexible no? and adaptive to changes because there are different and different learners that we have. They must excite learners. So this is one another challenge that a teacher should have. They know how to excite our, their, their learners to become more resourceful. So they will continue to learn outside the school. We, we, we believe that the learning will not stop only in the four corners of the classroom. After that, after they go back again to the school, they are very excited and the resources that they have, you know, they, they become more resourceful when it comes to their, their output, their classes, because they are excited to go back again to the class. That is because a teacher able to facilitate that kind of environment in the class. So the school that we need to have a learning environment, an educational institution must look like this kind of, of, or must have this kind of situation in the classroom. A teacher should have this kind of, of scenario, like discovering our students' interests, 
instilling curiosity to our learners. We must be flexible in comes, when it comes to how are we going to teach our learners. And of course, we need to excite our learners to go back again in the school. And after going to school, they should be, uh, they should also continue to learn outside the school. So what is this all about? The school must what? No? The school must have this kind of environment and create a culture of inquiry. So why just we emphasize to this one? Why we need to develop an educational institution to have a culture of inquiry? Now, when a student, when our learners are very inquisitive, of course, they are, so, uh, they are seeking for quest of knowledge, information, skills, and whatsoever. So this is what we want to develop, the culture of inquiry. So what does a 21st century curriculum looks like in an in a, in a educational institution? We mentioned earlier, we have here, the 21st century education must be what? Must, be ha must have a critical attributes that are interdisciplinary here. So interdisciplinary, we all know that. When I say discipline, these are subject areas. If you are teaching English, you should not only focus in English. You might integrate other subject area or other discipline to your subject. That's interdisciplinary. We have project-based learning or PM, uh, PBL. And of course, we should not forget that today we need this kind of learning, the research-driven activities research-driven tasks to our learners. It is connected to local, national, global communities. So we make our learners to become globally competitive. And of course, their mind must be open to globalization. No? But do not forget the localization. That's what we call, we need to become a local teacher, globally and locally aligned individuals, locally, globally aligned. To our teaching principles. 21st century curriculum is abon abandonment, finally, of textbook driven. So we should separate ourselves to this situation. The textbook driven principle should not be implemented anymore in a 21st century curriculum. Teacher centered approach of teaching should not be applied anymore in the 21st century education. The paper pencil assessment should not be also part of the 21st century curriculum. So we should, we don't need this anymore no? in the 21st century. There are a lot of ways on how to assess our learners. These are the authentic ways, authentic form of assessment. No? Learning is not confined to the memorization of facts, which is, uh, our previous teachers in the traditional time, traditional way, uh, letting us memorize the facts aside, aside uh, this, uh, instead of having this kind of activity, why not going to a higher order thinking na mga activities? Figures alone, but rather is connected to previous knowledge, personal experience, interests, talents, and habits must be the priority in the 21st century curriculum. Learning is not confined to this kind of activity no? alone, but rather what we need is to connect the previous knowledge, no? connect the previous knowledge, the schema of our learners to the recent one. Their personal experiences are very important also. Uh, consider also their personal experiences in the delivery of instruction. You need also to uh, ask them of their personal experience of that learning, of, of, of that content that they are going to deliver. You know, their interests must be also consider their talents and habits because we have different types of learners, the diversity of learners. I think we need to think of the Love different learning styles and the multiple intelligences of our learners. So we should think of our students rather than thinking of, of our own way of teaching. We need to consider 
the student-centered approach. So that's the 21st century curriculum. Here comes this diagram. No, let's analyze the core principle of a student-centered learning. We have come across to this left of to, to this principle, the student-centered learning. But let's go into these uh, details of what are those four principles of student-centered learning so that when you will become a, a teacher someday, a professional teacher someday, we need to inculcate to our mind as a future teacher that the learning must be undergo, but I must be performed by the student and not by the teacher. No, that is why it is called learning process. The teacher will facilitate and be guided of these four principles of student-centered learning. So let's start with number one. This is very important. So in this point, no, uh, this will be the second question. Uh, give me your thoughts on the diagram before I will be discussing. You give me your, your thoughts on the, on the four principles uh, four principles of student center, the personalized learning, the competency-based learning, the student-owned learning, and anytime, anywhere learning. That's the four principle, no? Like if you try to look at that's a system, that's what we need, a deeper learning so that we can reach, so that we can attain knowledge, skills, disposition to succeed in our career and into our civic life. So why do we include here the civic life? Because we should always remember that the real world is in the society, in the community. That is why it is called civic life. After finishing college, you will be having your own career. And of course, you will be living here in our society, in our community. That's what we call the civic life. Okay, going back to the poor principle, I will just give a short discussion on this so that you can elaborate your own understanding here in the comment section. Give me your thoughts on the four principles of student-centered learning. So I will start with the personalized learning. Now, uh, we believe on the statement that learning must be personalized, individualized, but it is a very challenging approach to our learners because it, we cannot really deny that the, 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 the fact in our educational system here in the country. In one classroom, we have more than 50 to 60 students. So it is a great challenge on how to personalize the learning of our learners. So we must be creative as teachers on how to make learning personalized. Become more resourceful. Categorize the type of learners you have. Get into their interests. Get also onto their uh, level of excitement, entice, and engage them into different learning experience so that the personalized learning principle as a student-centered part of approach of learning must be realized. Now, there is no such thing as fit, uh, tailored fit size learning. When you say tailored fit size, no? uh, this approach will be good to all kinds of learners. No? Uh, for example, there are different sizes of shirts. No? For example, you prepare for large. Not all students can be fitted to large size of shirts. So that's the principle of personalized learning. So you need to individualize, contextualize the type of learner, uh, the, the learning process in your class. Because our learners have different type of learning styles, different intelligences, different interests. So it is, again, it's a great challenge for us, future teacher, you as a future teacher, for us teachers right now in the 21st century. So you, you think beyond, beyond to what is expected of being a teacher. If you are just a plain teacher of having the chalk and talk discussion, that's what we call a tailored fit size approach of teaching. We should keep ourselves away from that principle. Okay, so what are you going to do? Differentiate approach, differentiate, differentiated instruction must be implemented. I'll repeat, the word here in the personalized learning is differentiated instruction, differentiated assessment, 
because we have a different type of learners, diversity of learners are present in the class. Okay, that's personalized learning. Another thing, competency-based learning. We always talk about competencies. We have come across the word competency. This should be our priority. These competencies are the skills, the knowledge, the attitude that we want our learners to possess. Competency-based, there are standards that being identified by the different government agencies, especially DepEd, SHED, and TESDA, on the competency of, of a certain subject that a student may acquire at the end of the school year. That's the, in the curriculum. That is a standard-based curriculum, a standard-based competency. We should not go, um, we should not, what do you call this one? We should not give activities which is not aligned to the competency of a certain subject. You know? This is sometimes being implemented by some of our teachers before we are asked to do something which is not related or which is no relationship with the subject itself. We are asked to submit a requirement, a project which is not aligned with the competency. So sad to note on that point, you know, as a future teacher, we always give an assessment to assess our learners. In the principle of assessments, we have three types of assessment. Assessment of learning, assessment as learning, assessment to learning. We can have another, another discussion on that, but these three, three types of assessment should be put into consideration when you give assessment. It should always be competency-based learning. The third thing, anytime, anywhere learning. What is this all about? When I say anytime, anywhere learning, today, because of the advent of technology, a student could also learn in his own pace without, <clears throat> excuse me, without the teacher beside him or her. Because learning may occur not only in the classroom that go beyond, but outside the four corner of the classroom, we can get some information. So that is why the teacher is not the sole source of information not the only dispenser of knowledge. So we have what we call the self-directed learn, learning, especially in the tertiary education where students may have their, his, his or her own pace of learning anytime, anywhere. So that's a student-centered learning. That's what we call the flexibil flexibility of learning that may occur in the process. Fourth one, which is also important, fourth principle, the student own learning. So what do you mean by this one? Student own learning. A democratic principle of learning must also occur in the teaching and learning process. Let's have an idea that the student really own the learning. It is not because of the teacher. The teacher is there to facilitate the learning. Give them the guide, no? Gradual release of the responsibility as a student so that they could have their own pace of learning and they can own the learning. Give them the chance to have their own learning. Give them the freedom. You know, when it comes, for example, an assessment, try to ask their opinion, try to get their interest also of what they can say about the assessment. They can also uh, involve in the making of the rubrics as part of assessing their learning so that they could own their learning. So I think that's the four principle of student-centered learning. No, If we have that one, there is a deeper form of learning. If we could implement this four principle of learning, no, there is no reason why there is no reason why we could not attain, attain this kind of situation in our country on our learners, a very independent learner. So that's the four principles of student-centered learning. So what does a learning environment looks like in the 21st century? So you as a future teacher, 
what comes to our mind? No, when you say learning environment, the learning environment is the place where the learning may occur and also the teaching process. In the 21st century classroom, it must be a student center. That is why we discuss the core principle. No, we can only say that that is a student-centered uh, student learning environment if the core principles of student-centered learning is evident. Like, number one, it should be, again, repeat, we have the personalized learning. We also have the competency-based learning, the anywhere, anytime types of learning, and of course, the student-owned learning. So, Teachers no longer functions as just merely lecturers. It must have an idea of facilitating the learning. Let the students construct their own learning. That's why in the principle of constructivism, if you hear that one, no, uh, this, the teacher is just to facilitate, guide, a coach, no, uh, scaffolding, no, or in the principle and the theory of Lev Vygotsky, the zone of proximal development. The ZPD, the Zone of Proximal Development, no? where the teacher facilitates, mentor, give coaches, assesses the students in their learning progress, not the sole source of information, not the, sole, the dispenser, not the, the main dispenser of knowledge. So what else? Attractive, uplifting, secured, and safe in learning environment. So attractive. So it is now the rule of the teacher on how to make his classroom of the learning environment more attractive, which is today in the 21st century, technology-based learning is very evident, which we need to, to uplift also. No? Technology, devices, secured also and safe. Textbooks are no longer a major source of information. We have the internet. No, but we must be critical when it comes to searching, the, uh, using the internet, the social media, the other learning platforms in the social media or in the internet. No, the 21st century education or learning environment is filled with technology anymore. Uh, anymore. No, uh, the, the textbook-based approach is no longer evident right now. Technology in the 21st century pedagogy in the strategy of teaching, we integrate already technology because as of today, our learners are into technology. They are what we call the digital natives of technology. And sometimes the teacher right now are the migrants of, of, of uh, digital migrants. No? So when we now think of our strategies, approaches in teaching no, or the pedagogy of teaching, we need to integrate always technology. Because the span of attention of our learners today, if it is solely just a talk and talk discussion, you might not get their interest. You might not get their attention. So we must be creative enough, resourceful enough in order to get the interest of our learner. And with the aid of the computer or the devices, the technology, we can deliver, we can facilitate the learning creatively and the students are actively participative and actively engaged in the learning and teaching process. So in the 21st century learning, recognizes full access to technology, though from the different the smart, smartphones, smart TV, internet, iPad, and the different ways, you know, Wi-Fi access should be available along areas of the school, it should be uh, it should be uh, Wi-Fi ready, but in our case, in our country, that's, that's a great challenge because of the access of the internet. Now we have a very slow internet connectivity. That is why we can always also be, uh, we can also think of, of how insecure are we in other countries, especially the nearby uh, nearby or neighboring countries who are very advanced in technology. The various laboratories, no, from a model, from, from this skeletal model to a very high tech, na, no, mga uh, computer aided na, na mga instruction, 
computer aided instructional materials no look at a uh, science laboratory no of, of this very uh, advanced uh, schools and laboratories laboratories of other advanced universities and colleges in other countries they are no longer using that kind of model they are using the technology integrated into the different devices okay we have they also have the advancement of, of, of electronic board, no? instead of having the traditional blackboard or whiteboard, they have what we call the electronic board, which allow the, which allow the students to manipulate, no? to simulate. All classrooms should have also um, this smart TV, no? That's a great change, no? but uh, sad to say, sad to note, some of our schools here, public schools, not to degrade them, and not also all, uh, not all, not all, not all private schools also have that kind of setup in the 21st century learning environment. We are just hoping that one day, one of those days, we could have this kind of classroom so that our students are also interested to learning. So let's understand our learners in the 21st century. According to a study of 2001, students we have today are referred to digital natives. Now, as I said, they are very manipulative. Even in a very young age, they are already exposed to this kind of different digital devices, while some other educators who were born in the 20th or late, this year, uh, this century, or this decades, are considered as digital immigrants. Students are schools; they are intelligent, independent, and extremely capable. So that is our fear. Uh, fear, fear that someday, sometimes, if we engage ourselves as a teacher in our learners in the teaching and learning process using the technology, we might come up to to asking our student to help us assess in setting up the technology because we are digital immigrants but we should not be afraid of of learning the technology we are in the 21st century we need to be adaptive to changes and to innovation we all know that our learners are skilled with technology and they are comfortable with this the global and intercultural communication because of different forms of media because of globalization what else? The 21st century skills outcome and demands in the job market. Okay. Okay. These are the learning skills that very highly demanded for us to learn a good job in the market. As I said, the forces, no? These are the learning skills. We discussed this earlier. Uh, a student should possess this one after he finishes his degree or his schooling, critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, and communication. This is the business industries, the professional world, world is looking into type of graduates that we need to have. Of course, the literacy skills. Today in the 21st century, we must have uh, the information skills. We know how to distinguish how reliable are the source of information that we have. We can distinguish the, the uh, unoriginal to the original information through the true and not true information. And of course, the utilization of media. We must also be critical of this kind of literacy. Let, we must also learn from this uh, literacy the media literacy, and of course, the technology. So if you want to become a teacher, these are the new literacies that we need to enhance and build so that when we are going to teach, we can integrate this one across to whatever curriculum. Here comes the most important skills, I think. The life skills. Today, lifelong learning is important. It is not only the learning that we acquire in the classroom. We need also the life skill. Sometimes 
we can also distinguish this is what we call the street street smart individuals they were not able to go to school but they are very knowledgeable they possesses the life skills this is sometimes the the mishaps of, of our students because this is also the reason nganong bakit wala tayong ganito bakit we could not acquire this one because our teachers did not integrate these life skills in the teaching and learning process the additional way of teaching is talk and talk paper and pencil project and like that but we forgot that we need also to inculcate and develop the life skills of our learners like flexibility we also have the leadership skills initiative skills productivity skills and the social skills these are what we call the life skills this five is very important skills okay let's look into this kind of situation let's compare the then and now of education let's have the third one third one the third and last question for this video presentation this lecture the recorded lecture the then and how now so let's compare the paradigm shift no from the traditional to the to the present or the modern so give me your thoughts on the idea of the paradigm shift of the 21st century education so looking into this kind of situation so give me your thoughts on how uh, or differentiate the two situation of this uh, educational situation from the modern uh, from the traditional to the modern okay Let's have now, if you want to become a teacher in the 21st century, you must think of it, these following skills, characteristics of a teacher. A multi-literate, that is why we engage ourselves to this type of learning, the new literacies. Multi-specialist, you should not only be an uh, expert on your own major or your own uh, 40, but it must be a multi-specialist. You must be good enough with other field of knowledge. Multi-skilled, self-directed also teachers, lifelong learners. No? Of course, a teacher must also be a flexible so that these are the things, characteristics of yours if you want to become a teacher in the 21st century. Creative and problem solver, critical thinker, has passion for excellent teaching and high emotional quotient. So imagine this is, these are very challenging characteristics of a 21st century teacher. Imagine to think about this if you are having this one in the process because you are yet a student right now, but in the near future, in order to you to become a very effective 21st century teacher, someday, somehow you need to have this characteristics look at this one the industrial revolution no the education 1.0 2.0 3.0 and of course the industrial revolution 4.0 so the education 4.0 look at them look at how it changes from a traditional chalkboard to a overhead projector no that is what we call the ohp overhead projector to in the recent time we have also the gadgets already the portable gadgets and look at what happened in the 4.0 education 4.0 amazing that was so amazing there comes a time that we will no longer be needed in the classroom but it is very different far different a classroom without a teacher so let's stop with this the 21st century skills, that's another topic to discuss. So let's end up with this discussion, the 21st century education, the education 4.0 or the industrial revolution. So there, were, there is what they call an innovation of our educational system, the paradigm shift.
of education. So thank you so much, everyone, for listening. I hope that you have learned something from today's lecture or discussion. So don't forget also to comment, to give your comment in the different questions being asked. So thank you so much, everyone. Once again, do not forget to like, and share this video, and click the subscribe button if you are not yet so uh, if you don't uh, if are if you don't subscribe yet to this this channel and of course click the notification bell thank you so much and god bless everyone